Welcome back to the channel, you guys. Welcome back to Ironclad RC. I'm Big B. This is part two to our three-part build series with the twin motor model Ships Ahoy 21-inch fiberglass catamaran. Uh, I've already done the work. We're basically going to get the drive line on this boat set up today. Get the motors installed, uh, stuffing tube, stinger with the post, a flanged bearing. We're going to make a custom flanged bearing rudder discuss servo options uh take a look at an offshore electrics order i have so uh stick around it's a long video grab your popcorns grab drinks <laughs> big b we're not clad rc Uh, before we get into the build, let's go over some of this stuff you guys hadn't seen. If you missed the introduction, I went over what I'm using for electronics and my thoughts on the build. So um, from Offshore Electrics, I picked up the Power HD Micro Servo. Not sure if I want to use that Micro Servo or a standard size. Still up in the air. I got the 530 seconds, 730 seconds quarter inch and nine thirty second brass tube these actually slide into one another tight and uh basically they'll telescope always good to have brass tube on hand and uh i usually get get them incrementally stepped up the only one i'm missing is three sixteenths he didn't have it in stock got some cooling line here uh i've had those you guys seen that in the last one we got the water exits four millimeter bullets for the speed control xt60s um and some ec5s um, best Coupler Kylet you can get. This is a Octura 8 to 0.130. These are best. You sure, there's other better cup like German manufacturers that are actually making some like precision cup Kylets couplers, but uh for the money you can't beat Octura. And the um the push push rod connectors for our rudder. It's an 87 millimeter long rudder blade center mounted okay uh like i told you guys in the last video it was identical to our 66 millimeter long rudder um, i think it's going to work perfect man it's like it's the perfect length perfect width real thin there's no water pickup so we're going to actually run an external water pickup somewhere maybe two and um yeah yeah so let's get to the motor install so i'm actually running two 2948s, 3550kV, okay? Kind of like a, a big block for this boat. <laughs> Basically going to be mounting my motors with this custom motor mount that I built for the boat. Um, it's 2 millimeter thick carbon fiber, okay? Uh, it actually is going to double as hull reinforcement, build it right into the hull of the boat. Okay, I cut out these slits right here. So uh, motor swaps and maintenance, pulling the motor out should be much easier so we don't have to like fight finding the whole blind in the boat. Once I get the motor in there, we just basically tighten down the motor screw, head screw with a, a full turn with my flex driver. Okay, pretty sweet little motor mount. All right, probably gonna have to run the motors angled in on each side. Okay, so I'm basically going to have to try to find two different angles. An, uh, an angle like this, and then get the right angle in without hitting the outside of the boat. Okay, I've uh, done a lot of research, a lot of research, a lot of reading forums, etc. Uh, looking at photos of successful performing catamaran hulls. Um, found that they're actually offsetting the strut stinger through hole on the main ride surface which is this guy here they're kind of offsetting it to the outside i think that's going to actually aid in stability so the boat don't like walk or or rock it should stay flat and stable in a corner with the through holes mounted outside of the center line on your ride surface that's just my opinion and what i found online so i'm basically going to tack them into place one at a time okay i'm not going to do both of them i'm going to do one and then i'm going to let it sit up and then epoxy the other one in 
try to match it up the best I can. If I try to do both of them, I just don't think it's going to work out. I'm going to add some of this Cabasil here to thicken up my epoxy so it don't run out, run all over the place. <coughs> I didn't put any any epoxy ho dam holes in because I'm going to be basically building this thing into the boat so I didn't feel the need to drill any dam holes in it. <laughs> So I actually got both of the motors tacked into place. This one's com completely cured out. This one's still tacky. I'm still working on the angle. I figured I would kind of touch base, show you guys how I'm doing it. It's nothing scientific or mathematical. The, uh, the inside corners of this boat are, are different. It's a hand laid boat, so they're not really matching. Um, this line right here, it's basically the same as this back line or the transom. So I've actually taken this adjustable ruler, basically coming in here, making sure I got the top of my motor mount, basically the same on both sides. Kind of an optical illusion, because you, you know, you got this angle going out, and then you got the angle going down. So if your motors are not 100% like matching, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. I got mine super close. From the width that it like the length from the transom where the position the angle down it's it's close close enough for me most important part i would i would imagine is just making sure your your cables are going to line up to the through hole on the boat okay you look at it one way it looks you know out of whack then you turn it look at it straight they look perfect and you know it's just it's an optical illusion it's playing games with me so we need to actually figure out where we want to end our stuffing tube, which in this case, it's going to be stuffing tube slash stinger. Uh, we're going to use these posts right here to basically clip onto our stuffing tube, mount it basically in the hole like that. And it's going to keep our stuffing tube stinger in place until I finish and finalize the design of our carbon fiber tube so we need to actually install our rudder figure out where we're going to put this on the transom so i got my rudder temporarily mounted up on the transom of the boat actually looks pretty good got a dead nut center she's straight up and down 50 millimeters of rudder blade will be in the water i know what you guys are thinking that's a lot but it's a it's a knife blade style rudder one of the reasons i bought this rudder and it was the only rudder I really found that I thought would work on the boat. <laughs> so it'll basically run through the hole somewhere in there. And it should meet up on the top of my micro servo. And with the full size servo, we'll run the linkage close to center. And it should be perfect. Okay. Um, I really want to run the micro because I'll have push and pull. But I just worry about torque on that micro servo. So... While I'm thinking and figuring out what I want to do there, let's go ahead and make the stuffing tube stinger. Okay, it's basically going to be constructed from three sixteenths brass tube. That will be that will be the bushing that the four millimeter stub shaft rides on. It's going to be the bushing, the three sixteenths brass tube, the seven thirty seconds brass tube. That will be the main main stuffing tube doubling as our stinger you feel me so um, that's actually going to accommodate a 0 0.130 cable with a liner or a four millimeter cable without a liner okay so we'll have options and we'll see if we need to deviate from the plan as we make it so we're going to make both of them at the same time so they're pretty much identical you guys see that it's not much of a bend to meet up to the motor whatsoever so we're going to go ahead and get that bend started i like to just kind of use my my fingers I, you know i don't use the springs i don't use heat i mean i do use heat don't get me wrong i've had to use heat a lot of times if i'm trying to get a nice hard bend in something but this is like a gentle bend so um 
and the bend's right at the very end of my tube. It's like right at the very end. So what I like to do, if I have to bend the tube at the end, what I'll do is, is make my bend like in from the end of the tube and then just use my pipe cutter to, to cut the length, you know? Because it's hard to bend like right here. So I usually just back up a little bit and I'll bend ever so carefully not to kink my tube okay and then uh, I'll cut the end off because it's like I said it's hard to bend the end Okay, so I went ahead and cut my 7 30 seconds brass tube. Okay, I basically cut it in the middle. I cut the end off till I had the bend exactly where I wanted it to meet up to my motors. Okay, and I'm going to show you guys how I got my stuffing tube stinger set up. 0.130 liner for our 0.130 cable, 3 16 homemade bushing with a flared end we're about to make one of these okay that flare on the end is basically to keep our bushing at the end of our stuffing tube so it don't like float back and forth in there okay and our four millimeter stub shaft it's gonna slide right in okay boom 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 looks pretty good basically you're just gonna install this in the boat Oh yeah, by the way, you're, you're going to need to actually use a file to clean up the inside of this cut tube. Make sure there's no burrs, make sure there's no flange there. So you can actually fit this bushing in there and it spins freely. You want it to spin freely. I got a little bit of work to do to mine still. I may need to cut this back a little bit. We need to see where it's going to lay at here. Hopefully you guys will be able to see. Okay, we'll go ahead and try to get that cable. Get it lined up to the motor. All right, just a little gap because I'm using 0 .130 cables. I don't want them to spin, spin off, kink off, you know, break or whatnot. So uh, we got nice alignment to the motor, it looks like. You can like turn that stuff into, get it lined up perfect. Okay, that's why I put that little angle in and up so we get a good alignment to our stuff too all right and uh basically now now we just need to make sure it's lined up with our ride pad you know we want it to be in line with the 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 keel so to speak on the boat the center line and um go ahead and um get that bearing made for the other one so we can go ahead and get this guy right here cut we got to cut another one this is basically what our post is going to sit in it's going to get mounted in the boat just like this flush mounted on the bottom does your workbench look like this when you're building a freaking boat jeez <laughs> i got uh i got my post drilled out on both of them i had some cracking on that brittle top coat they use on this hull but I uh, made sure the post mount was like vertical and my my stuffing tube stinger is in line with a ride pad. So that's pretty much ready to go. Okay. And uh, we're going to work on that bearing bushing I was telling you guys about. See how uh, I got the end of it flanged so we don't lose it. So let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully I can reproduce it. Um, I got one shot at it. This is my only piece of 3 16 because OSE was out when I made the order. So basically to flare out the end of my tube, this is how I'm doing it anyway. I use this stepped bit so I can thin the end of the tube out and kind of taper it. OK, 
okay yeah see how it's starting to flare it all right once you get it kind of drilled and you got like a little a little flare started uh, basically what I did what I did is I put a punch on my drill kind of use that punch don't cut your hand don't like go into your hand right here okay but I use that punch for a second that'll kind of thin out some material okay and then I took another punch that had a round end and I basically drilled down on it and that's what gave me my flare kind of go around in a circle Two flanged bearings. Got a little ding in it right there. I could probably probably work that out. Yep, I just worked it out. See that? Worked that little bit bad place out. You can also just kind of once you get it to this point, you can probably just kind of lightly tap and kind of kind of like peel it back a little bit. So it's not so not so odd shaped you know okay so so the bearing that I already have cut I'm just going to show you guys the length I run it just a little bit longer than my stub shaft and then we'll have a little gap so it's about two millimeters longer okay all right, so uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you guys what we got for our stuff and tube stinger. Okay, uh, I got my post drilled on both of them. I made sure the post was drilled so that my stingers are in line with the ride pad, the keel. Okay, uh, got my post cut, got both of them cut, prepped up. I still gotta do some filing, sanding on this one. And uh, they're basically ready to go. Uh, if you guys are wondering or thinking, Big B, those posts are going to create drag. Well, you're wrong. They're not going to be in the water whatsoever. Especially if I run my stinger in, in this position, dead nuts flat, the end of my stinger, dead nuts flat, with the ride surface, with that little bit of down angle, even if I run it, I would have to basically run... I would basically have to run my stinger in that position for it to create any kind of drag. And I, I doubt we're going to have to go that deep. So uh, that should be good in that aspect. You know, the the rod end's actually got a nice shape, hydrodynamic shape to it. So even if it does scrub the water some, it should be okay. Uh, I want to throw this out there. Uh, this foam boat stand that I made is awesome. I like to take it to the pond with me, but it's also a great workbench stand. You can set monos in it, you can set hydroplanes, catamarans on it, especially larger catamarans with a real wide tunnel. It works great. I especially like it for standing my boat up because a lot of times I do a lot of work and I need my boat sitting on its side. Or when you're trying to get nuts in, you can stand it up. It's so freaking convenient. Preschool or building blocks. And my wife found them. I have no idea where to get them at. So I can't really include a link. But something similar to this. Just super glue. A couple blocks together. You know. And it works so freaking good, man. Oh, I love that little little boat stand. Um, so right now, we're about to... The video is probably long. But I was going to try to get a lot done in this one go ahead and uh epoxy them into the boat i'm just going to go 15 minute actually i think i'm going to go 30 minute 
epoxy for the through hole just plain epoxy plain epoxy it has a little bit of flex to it <clears throat> so you know bending bending these up and down I would think we would need a little bit of give in the through hole itself once I get just a, a, a nice application of plain epoxy in my through hole here I'm going to actually use some chopped up carbon fiber to reinforce the stuffing tube into the boat I'm gonna like build it up like all the way around it right here make like a carbon fiber block that it sits in so when we bend our stuffing tube back here uh, we'll have a little bit of give with the plain epoxy and that carbon fiber I'll probably throw a little bit of fiberglass in it too so it don't like crack on us it'll keep it like rigid to the motor while I have that carbon fiber mixed up we're going to go ahead and epoxy the motor mounts into the hull I'm going to fast forward through it My post mounted up okay I'll show you here in a minute I basically have everything loaded up into the boat the ESC's the two batteries motors servo just gonna show you guys where my center of gravity is at now I actually have quite a bit of a CG adjustability I can get my CG all the way up to here and I can get it all the way back to here okay uh, basically just gonna run velcro in the sponsons for my batteries with a little piece of jam foam on top three and four s all right and uh the esc's are going to get mounted dead center like that so i can get to the post for tuning okay um we're going to mount the servo in the next video i think i am going to go micro probably going to kick myself in the butt for that but i am going to go micro servo uh the motors i don't know if i showed you guys this Video's getting long. The motors come out super easy. They slide back in super duper easy. Okay, carbon fibered around my stuffing tube, carbon fibered around the front and the back of the motor mounts. So everything's basically mounted in the boat. Got my post in back there. Forgot to cut that post short, but it should be all right. Nobody's really going to see it. Uh, they're actually pretty stout pretty stout with that post epoxy in there's no side to side movement okay uh, we can adjust it and get our up and down positive and negative trim okay as long as we bend it in this area if you decide to go this route with a stuff and tube stinger this is 72 millimeters long you definitely gonna need a support even with a support you run a risk of bending the stuffing tube with the torque of a propeller so you need to make sure your props are perfectly balanced if you're not going to run a stinger barrel like a true stinger you know if you're going to go this route you gotta you gotta make sure your props are balanced okay because with the torque rpm the unbalanced prop it'll basically bend your stuffing tube like a 90 degree angle that's basically why i ran my bushing to about right here where my thumbnails at okay so it gets that support from two different thickness brass tubes and the post support all right so it should be all right it should be all right um yeah so uh we'll let you guys go we'll finish it up in the next one it'll be a three-part series